Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So, in this video we're going to be taking another look at a, well what I would usually call a shocking change to Yuzu emulator, this Nintendo Switch emulator, but if you've seen any of the videos of its progress in the past few days, I'm just running out of words to describe exactly how amazing its performance and how amazing these new improvements we are getting daily are. So this Yuzu build I am currently using has some changes in it which actually might be in the latest canary of Yuzu emulator right now. What I want you to pay attention to is just how smooth everything becomes so quickly in this new build and what is most likely merged to Canary right now. You can see that straight away we go to 100% speed at 60 frames per second. Now we're going to load into my continue screen and we're going to get a small bit of lag, you're going to see our performance is going to drop down, but straight away, almost instantaneously, our performance is going to completely smooth out. You can see that all of these animations are super smooth, we're running at 60 FPS at 100% game speed, and even though the render quality in the menus isn't perfect, it is just so smooth to navigate these menus right now, whereas previously we were running between 30 and 40 frames per second. Now what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to load back into Sand Kingdom where my video yesterday showed its performance. In that video we were running at anywhere between 3, 4 and 5 frames per second and while I'd love to say that you're going to be surprised by how much of a performance increase we've seen in this new build, you're probably not going to be surprised considering how many massive leaps in performance and render quality we've seen in the past few days. So there you go, we're now loaded into game and instead of getting 3, 4 and 5 FPS, we are now getting in between 15 and 25 frames per second in the exact same gameplay situation. It absolutely blows my mind just how much work these developers are putting in on a daily basis. It seems like they literally just don't sleep and all they are doing is working on this Nintendo Switch emulator. You can see while we're jumping around, we're still maintaining in and around 15, 16 and 17 frames per second. Okay. Okay, so what I now want to do is also show off that not only have they increased performance, but they have also given us better compatibility. So what you would normally do in Super Mario Odyssey is you'd come to your data management, you'd come to your game saves and you'd just load up another kingdom or another save. Now unfortunately, if you do that in Yuzu at the moment, it's just going to soft lock the emulator and you're just going to have to reopen it anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop emulation and I'm going to reload Super Mario Odyssey and get us back into our menus. I'm going to do this all in real time. Time. I just don't want to do any cuts in this video so I uh, so yeah I just want to kind of show you guys exactly what the usability levels of this emulator are like right now. So yeah we're back here in the input warning screen or input selection screen I'm not really sure what you'd call this kind of screen and now we need to wait to load through to our continue screen. So here we go we just need to wait for performance to stabilize as it does in about one second and we're going to come back to options into data management into load and we're going to load our game save that is in cloud kingdom now you're going to see straight away it just loads completely smoothly through the save screen the only bits of stutter we get if if you could even call it stutter is when we get into into the end of the loading screen just as it's about to load gameplay. Now here we are, we're loaded into Cloud Kingdom where performance was previously absolutely abysmal for me at least. In the last few Canary builds when I tested this area I was only able to get around between 1.5 and 2 frames per second at any point in time and right now you can see that we are getting between 20 frames per second and a maximum I have ever seen in this area when not recording game footage was 35 frames per second. These are playable frame rates and if it wasn't for the render quality, areas like this in Super Mario Odyssey and there are quite a few that have actually quite good performance. For example, Metro Kingdom has quite good performance and Wooded Kingdom even though it has quite bad render quality right now has actual quite good performance in Super Mario Odyssey. So it's actually quite startling when you're looking at this and seeing playable frame rates in a game on an emulator that is so new like this. It's absolutely mind blowing to see the amount of work that these developers are putting in to get these games working on a daily basis. I just, I can't even imagine the amount of work that it goes in, the amount of, not even work, just work and bug fixing and troubleshooting and trying to figure out like why is this not working? Why is X not working? Why is Y not working? So yeah, as I've probably said about 400 times in this video, it's just mind blowing to see this kind of progress. So if you guys want to help with the development of this emulator, you can simply do so by heading on over to their Patreon page and pledging to support the development of the emulator itself. You'll find a link for that down in the description of this video. 
So once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.